Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, Sagas in Minutes, the series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today, we're going to be delving into some more classic era One Piece and start our exploration of the Grand Line with the Alabaster Saga. The Alabaster Saga is the second in the series, consisting of five individual arcs told over a mighty 117 chapters and a giggity 69 anime episodes. And we begin with the Straw Hats embarking on their adventure into the Grand Line. However, to enter this stretch of water, one must travel over the exceptionally dangerous Reverse Mountain. Although through a good old bout of teamwork, they manage to cross the mountain, enter the Grand Line, and the very first thing they see is a, uh, a, a, a giant whale. The whale's name is the Boon, and Luffy ends up curing him of his depression somewhat, as well as graffitis a poorly drawn straw hat upon him. The crew also discover an old doctor named Crocus, who informs them of exactly how to travel the Grand Line, as well as states that the final island is Raftel, an island in which only the crew of the former Pirate King has ever reached, and it is assumed that this is where the One Piece is hidden. During this time, there's also some tomfoolery with some mysterious antagonists known as Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday, who were trying to kill the Boon so that they could feed his juicy whale meat to their hometown. Things do not go well for them, but eventually the two beg the Straw Hats to take them to an island named Whiskey Peak, to which Luffy surprisingly agrees. And as the group leave Reverse Mountain, we linger on Crocus for a bit, who reveals that he once knew the former Pirate King and ponders over whether the Straw Hats are the pirate crew that they've been waiting for. Upon arrival in Whiskey Peak, the crew are greeted as heroes and even treated to a soiree of sorts. However, this was but a clever ruse, and it is revealed that the entire island was populated by agents of an underground organization named Baroque Works, who were planning to capture Luffy and turn him into the world government to claim his 30 million berry bounty. Unfortunately for them, and very impressively, despite having one drinking contest against 13 individual people that night, Zoro manages to stay alert and proceeds to take out the entire town of roughly 100 bounty hunters. Nobody is capable of stopping him whatsoever, not even the higher ranking Baroque Works agents. However, eventually Luffy wakes up and misunderstanding the situation, begins a fight with Zoro. In the meantime, two officer agents arrive on the island known as Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, who are in search of a spy within their organization. Although they find themselves in the way of the fight between Luffy and Zoro and end up being beaten exceedingly quickly. After witnessing such strength, the choice is made to reveal the true identity of Miss Wednesday, who is actually Princess Vivi of the Alabaster Kingdom. Huh. What do you know? And it is then explained that the leader of Baroque Works, Sir Crocodile, who is also one of the seven warlords of the sea, has been working to plunge Alabaster into civil war for his own nefarious purposes, and Vivi infiltrated his organization to find a way to fight him. The Straw Hats agree to help Vivi save her nation, however, just prior to their departure from the island, they encounter Miss All Sunday, the vice president of Baroque Works, who attempts to help the crew, but Luffy refuses. And so we set sail. With the next stop of the log pose being an island known as Little Garden, a piece of land populated by dinosaurs, two giants, and wouldn't you know it, several more Baroque Works agents. In regards to the giants though, their names are Dory and Proggy, and they have been locked in a never-ending duel for the past century, long enough that they have both forgotten what they're fighting over. But hey, that is not going to stop two citizens of Elbaf doing their thing. The two of them are also former infamous pirate captains with a 100 million berry bounty on their heads each, and so the officer agent Mr. Three comes up with a cunning plan to interrupt the fight and collect the bounty. Unlike prior agents, Mr. Three and his partner Miss Golden Week present a proper challenge to the Straw Hats, with Mr. Three managing to imprison Zoro, Nami, and Vivi on a wax wedding cake candelabra thing crafted from his devil fruit abilities, while Miss Golden Week subdued Luffy purely through the power of painting. And so it is left to Usopp and Vivi's pet duck Karu to save the day as they manage to free everyone and together take down the officer agents. As thanks for their actions, Dory and Broggy help the Straw Hats depart the island by sending them through a giant fishy known as the Island Eater. And it is revealed to us that the reason why they began fighting in the first place was because one day Dory and Broggy could not decide whose fish was bigger. And so they entered a contest of honor to settle the feud, a contest that to this day has still not come to a conclusion. But with that out of the way, it's now on to Alabaster, right? Wrong. Whilst on Little Garden, Nami caught a deadly fever, and so the Straw Hats have to put their mission on hold to find a doctor, which leads them to Drum Island, a bit of a wintry wasteland that had recently been sacked by a pirate known as Blackbeard, causing its former King Wapol to flee in fear. Now Wapol is a bit of a dick, and so he happened to take all of the island's best doctors with him, well, all except for one that is, a person referred to as a witch by the townsfolk, Dr. Kuriha. Unfortunately, Kuriha took up residence in Drum Castle after Wapol fled, and so it is put upon Luffy to carry both Nami and an injured Sanji, all the way up the highest mountain of the island, barehanded by the way, to which Luffy barely makes it to the top, and the three are taken in for medical treatment by Dr. Kuriha and her assistant, a reindeer 
called Tony Tony Chopper. Well, he's half reindeer anyway. Chopper was originally a reindeer. However, at a certain point in his life, he stumbled across the Hito Hito no Mi, and upon consuming it, he gained a human level of sentience, as well as the ability to transform into a human and a half human, half reindeer form. Following this, he was exiled from his herd and labeled a monster by the human residents of the island and only found solace in one person, his mentor, Dr. Hirolok. However, various tragedies struck and Hirolok took his own life in front of Drum Castle, prompting Chopper to beg Koreha to train him and sparking his dream to become a great doctor and cure all disease. Shortly after the Straw Hats arrived, the former King Wapo returned to the island to reclaim his throne, but remember, he's a bit of a dick, and so he was promptly defeated by Luffy and Chopper, and Chopper himself would go on to join the crew in order to travel the world to broaden his medical knowledge and make his dream come true. And now we arrive at the main event as the Straw Hats finally enter the desert nation of Alabaster. Just prior to their arrival, they encounter Bon Clay, an agent of Baroque Works, but they don't know that, and he doesn't know that they are prime targets of his organization. As such, they become friends instantly, and he displays his devil fruit power, which allows him to change his body into the form of anybody whom he has touched. One of the forms Bon Clay demonstrates is Vivi's father, Nefertari Cobra, which tips Vivi off to the fact that he is indeed a Baroque Works agent, and after the two groups depart, the Straw Hats come up with the idea to draw an X on their left arms to prove that they are all crewmen so as to not be fooled by Bon Clay pretending to be any of them in the future. As the Straw Hats land on Alabaster and make their way across the island, they encounter Smoker, the marine captain they met in Logtown, as well as Luffy's brother, Pork Gas T Ace, who saves them from Smoker and gives Luffy a piece of his Vivia card before continuing on his own personal mission to find a pirate by the name of Blackbeard. Deciding to face Crocodile head on, the crew makes for Rain Base and ends up captured in the basement of a casino named Rain Dinners, along with Smoker, who is pursuing them. Although they do manage to escape thanks to Sanji and his banana wani kicking abilities, and as thanks for saving his life, Smoker decides not to pursue the Straw Hats, who, having failed to defeat Crocodile, now desperately head for the capital city of Alabana to stop the civil war before it begins. Although Crocodile doesn't simply let them escape, and Luffy makes the decision to stay behind and face him alone in order to allow the others to proceed. Up against the wall, Luffy is entirely outclassed due to Crocodile's devil fruit abilities, a low gear type fruit that allows him to control and become sand. And after being impaled, Luffy is left for dead in the desert, although luckily he is saved by the enigmatic Miss All Sunday. Elsewhere, Vivi and the Straw Hats are unsuccessful in preventing the war from beginning, and the city becomes engulfed in battle, during which the Straw Hats each face off against a high-ranking agent of Baroque Works, with the battles looking a little something like this. Nami takes on her first one-on-one -on -one opponent, Usopp teams up with Chopper to take down an officer agent duo, Sanji defeats Nokama, and Zoro learns how to cut steel on the fly in order to come out on top against the infamous assassin, Das Bones. Meanwhile, Princess Vivi makes it all the way to the palace, confronting Crocodile, and is saved by Luffy just before he kills her. And so Luffy versus Crocodile, round two, two begins. The difference this time is that Luffy knows Crocodile's weakness being water, and so the fight is not anywhere near as one-sided, but Crocodile still manages to defeat Luffy a second time. Shortly after, it is revealed that Crocodile's goal in Alabaster was to reach a poneglyph, which are indestructible stones inscribed with an ancient language. In this case, the poneglyph located on Alabaster was said to detail the location of the ancient weapon Pluton. Miss All Sunday, who was hired by Crocodile because she can read this language, refuses to tell Crocodile what is truly written, prompting Crocodile to attempt to murder her, resolving that he will raise the entire kingdom until he finds the weapon. At this point, Luffy catches up to him and the two begin their third and final bout. By using his own blood as a water source, Luffy is able to strike Crocodile in a desperate battle and gains the upper hand, despite being poisoned by the Warlord's hook. And finally, in a moment of stunning resolve, Luffy exclaims that he will become the Pirate King and surpass Crocodile, kicking him into the air and punching him through solid bedrock with a barrage of strikes, leaving Crocodile defeated and the Kingdom of Alabaster saved. After exposing Crocodile, the Civil War ends immediately and Crocodile himself is arrested by Toshigi a subordinate of Captain Smoker. As a result of their actions, Zoro is deemed a threat by the world government and is assigned a bounty of 60 million berries, while Luffy, having defeated one of the seven warlords, has his bounty increased to a mighty 100 million berries. As the Straw Hats prepare to leave the island, they invite Vivi and Karu to become permanent members of the crew. However, Vivi makes the tough decision to sacrifice her dreams of adventure in favor of doing something that she is even more passionate about, which is leading her kingdom. And during their goodbyes, Vivi asks them one simple question, being that if they ever meet again, would they still consider her their shipmate? To which the Straw Hats simply raise their left arms in solidarity, confirming that Vivi and Karu will forever be members of the Straw Hat Pirates and proceed to set sail on their next grand adventure. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we'll be heading pretty high up into the heavens in order to break down the events of the Sky Island Saga. 
If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share or subscribe, because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Alabaster Saga. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Hello, this is Sir Crocodile. I mean, Mr. Zero. I mean, who is this? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Last name Injection. First name Anna. Very well. I'll check. Hey, everyone. Is there an anal injection in this building? Come on now. Who has an anal injection for me? How about you, Mr. One? I feel like you'd know an anal injection more than anybody else here. Wait a minute.